the fading of the specimens in the Hall of North American Mammals was really quite severe. They were no longer scientifically accurate, and that was one of the main reasons why we wanted to go in and carry out a renovation program. We hoped that we'd be able to come up with a method to recolor the faded taxidermy. In the uh, mid to late 1940s, fluorescent lights became available. And the artists seized on these immediately because by mixing incandescent floods and spots, those simulating directional sunlight and the, enhancing the warm colors of the spectrums with fluorescent lights, fluorescent tubes, to simulate the cool light reflected by the blue sky, you can get very real outdoor effects. So the artists use those in the dioramas to simulate dawn or dusk or the blasting midlight of the open prairie. What they did not realize was the damaging effects that fluorescent lights have on specimens. When we were looking for a colorant to apply to the specimens in the Hall of North American Mammals, we really focused on the bison diorama kind of as our model diorama. It had one of the highest light levels in the whole hall. It has the most mounted specimens inside the diorama. So we thought that any colorant that could be used in there could be applied to all of the other mammals in the hall that needed recoloring. We had to have a colorant that could have minimal effect to the hairs. And by that I mean they're not going to clump things together, impede any brushing or grooming that would have to happen in the future. Well, ideally, we were looking for a material that was either reversible or retreatable, so that in the future, if they wanted to renovate this hall again, it would be easy to take off whatever we had applied and apply something maybe newer or better. The research of our conservation staff was extensive. We tried different pigments with different solvents and finally arrived at a dye material and we were able to recolor and restore the natural color of the animal by using specimens both from this museum and loaned to us by the Smithsonian. Recoloring taxidermy has always been an issue. It's always been invasive to the specimen. The materials have always been permanent, uh, or the process or materials used have never been very naturalistic when completed. So without the help of the conservation department to come up with this material, um, this would have not been possible. It's interesting, the mail in the back, when you look through, those are pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're kind of shadowed from the light. We actually spent weeks trying to develop a way to blend the colors. With dyes, it's much different than working with paints. When mixing the colors, you, you didn't have an instant result. You couldn't tell exactly what the colors were until you applied them on something. I actually mixed a series of colors for each and every diorama, for each and every specimen to make sure that whatever we did was going to be completely convincing and completely accurate. Then we started to test the colors inside the diorama to make sure that they looked the same at my studio as they did inside the light of the diorama. So once the recoloring started, everything ran pretty smooth. I think these are very subtle effects. It's not dramatic like it was with the pronghorns and the bison. Um, you could certainly go darker with it. Well, this guy looks like the same thing, right? Yeah. That there was something that got bleached? It looks like there was something there. Yeah? I think I'd like it. Mm -hmm.